Hello. Hi, it is Alexa Hampton and this is 52 Weeks Live. And today I am going to be speaking to, Alf oh, hi William Lee, um, Alfredo Paredes. Um, and I'm going to ask him to join the minute I see him. Um, and there he is adding him and William Lee is going to haze him I am sure hello hi how are you hi how are you what a pleasure to see you oh, oh thank you so much for having me oh my gosh are you kidding what a trip um, so many things to ask you including one that I'm sure is intended to embarrass you that William okay. Lee supplied me with so okay, you ready good <laughs> Yeah. So I always like to uh, I always like to ask people how they start off in the business. So I hear you have a very interesting first job. Yeah, you mean my Laura Ashley job? Yes, your Laura Ashley job. Uh, that that was actually miraculous. I I, I was so grateful for that. Um, when I was uh, going to college, my dad refused to send me to art school. He's like, this no. is, it's amazing how many people have said that in these interviews, which is, it's no. astonishing because now that would not be the case. No, no, right? no, he wanted me to go to architecture school. Yeah. Which, ironically, I ended up building things everywhere, so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing these stories of parents not taking uh, well, things seriously that aren't yeah, like I, business I, or architecture. Other, my father, if I was 17, my dad wasn't even 37 years old. So for him, it was like, what do you mean? That's, you know, no. Yeah, it's a fake job. Yeah, there was also some veiled homophobia in that. For time. sure. Oh, for sure. So, but I said, I'm going to do it anyway. So I went yeah. to school. I, went, I got a, a somewhat decent scholarship to go to the Art Institute of Atlanta. I was not ready to go to schools in New York from Miami. And, is, well, and where are you from originally? Miami, Miami, Miami. first Cuban-American, so. Cool. Um, as is my best friend. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we're, we're, I we're... can speak Key Biscayne, or I can understand Key Biscayne oh, yeah. Cuban. All my summers in Key Biscayne. Yeah, that, it's an accent that I can understand. Yeah, I mean, my parents would leave their house in Coconut Grove and move to the Key yeah. for the summer, like they were going to their summer place, which was 20 minutes away. But yeah. And I saw one of my favorite on one of our movies at Coconut Grove in the movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Anyway, so you went to Atlanta. Yeah, and so obviously I had to get a job. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, there was a mall. As one does. Oh, Lenox Square, and I walked in, and there was this, uh, you know, they were looking for people. And I didn't know from Laura Ashley. It was 1982 or 83. Well, but, I mean, how could you not have known? She was such a powerhouse then. I was a suburban kid from Miami, Florida, for God's sake. I didn't know from chintzes and yeah, yeah. 2020 and, this and, that and all the stuff that they did. But I, uh, I walked in and I was one of 33 women. The, the <laughs> yeah. And it was awesome because it was, Laura was alive. There were only 10, uh, 12 stores in the United States at the time. And she was Wait. a huge deal. Did you get hired over all of the women? Because well, I'm no, glad like, to have a they, feminist I walked down. in, I, I guess not many guys walked in to apply for jobs. So yeah, they yeah, yeah. In the home department, which was, you know, those bolts of fabric they used to sell and lampshade yeah. and throw pillows that matched. And they would make Laura herself would have ties and aprons made for me. So great. Would work in the back, which was hilarious. So different, you know, they were all coordinated. Yeah, yeah. That's, I did that, that particular job for about seven or eight months. And then the woman, and why I say this was a big deal was because remember, it's the South, cotillions, hoop skirts, yeah. I mean, that, like perfect, glazed chintzes, all of that stuff. Yeah. I, while I was in school, they asked the woman who was in charge of the visual for the store had to leave, she had an illness and had to leave. And they looked at me and said, do you want to do it? I was like, yeah, that's easy. Wow. Do. What's there to do? It beats ripping bolts of fabric. And 
ironically, it was just a perfect timing because whatever I did, they were happy with and whatever it was, was right on brand and Laura loved it. Yeah, and, and that's it. And that is just like Ralph Lauren to many people later, that must have been a business school. Oh yeah, totally. Because I mean, she was, I mean, she had everything at that point. I remember she had a place on Madison and she also had a place on Bleecker. And um, we would totally go to her all the time. Highly coordinated and highly thought out, and it was great. I mean, but it was a very specific and individual look. You couldn't get it everywhere else. She owned but it. A lot of people wore it, which was surprising. Oh, yeah. Mutton, those dresses with the mutton sleeves, sure. and, the hooks and the whole thing, and square collars. I mean, it's like yeah, you know, and like a big white Peter Pan collar. Yeah, right. Anna, it was so totally. Like a, what do you call it? Like a chastity belt dress. <laughs> <laughs> And all the girl, all the women I work with wore those. And I was just in the middle of it, this Cuban kid, you know, doing it. And that was fine. And ironically, um, they that led me to a job with another company that moved me to Washington, which, of mm -hmm. course, I was studying fashion illustration. But working in the visual creative world got me jobs. So I, I yeah. got that. They moved me to D.C. Do you I, draw interiors? Yeah, more. Yeah, I can draw about anything. I don't sit and I mean... I know better people. I know better people than than I, than I doing it. But yeah, I can do it. I can explain anything. Yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> do you? Do you draw interior? I do, but you know, I just find that people who can do fashion drawings, you know, that's there's such a particular hand to that, right. and it's very expressive, and it um, it it tells a story with not necessarily right. lots of strokes. And my um, ooh, did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> my um, I watched it. My um, my drawings are aren't as thought you as like, a box. They're not so easy. They don't look so effortless. Well, so. yeah, very good friend. You know, Andre Malone. Yes, I do. He's a great. Well, great he friend. worked for my father and helped me. Um, you know, I was painting a watercolor, which is not my medium, for my in-laws of the Eric Theum in uh -huh. in uh, Athens, and he was helping me do the green. And he's you know like he's got oh. magic. Yeah, he just points his hands at a piece of paper and magic comes out. And so that's like, you know, not to do, we're not, you know, there are, I, 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 mean, I can draw fashion really well, like yeah. easily, easy, easy, easy. But I don't spend time doing it anymore. I found that by the time I found my other outlet in the world, you know, I was not doing that anymore. But I would say, What a I'm, waste. I'm well, chastising you, you except, wasteful wastrel. Except that I could draw myself through a situation like, no, this is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay, no. so you're not totally wasting. No, 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 no. All right, so you went to DC and you're working for what kind of what kind for, of outfit? I worked for Bridges of Georgetown, which was again another big retail that carried Ralph Lauren. There was a man there that was in charge of the creative who then left to go to Ralph Lauren. And fast forward a year or two, I ended up interviewing with he wanted me to move to that I should work for him when they opened that store on Madison Avenue. Yeah. And I came to New York. The store, the beautiful house. And I there that right about three months before it was about to open and I had no idea what I had stepped into. Even though I knew all about Ralph Lauren growing up wearing yeah. it. You know, sure, of course. Yeah. You did, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Did I you didn't pop want, your collar? No, maybe, but I, I was <laughs> like, I don't want to wear a Lacoste anymore. I want to wear, I want to wear a polo shirt, you know? As my most. kids, uh, my sons especially, they feel very happy when they're Polish. buying their suits. They feel uh, that they're in good hands, which is yeah, well, they are. Yeah. It's an interesting thing that they have identified a brand that, that makes them feel comfortable that what they're wearing is in good taste. Yeah, well, it, 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 it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So how long did you work there? 33 years. Wow. Long time. Um, <laughs> Dave, you see the gray hair? See the, yeah. see the tiny gray hair? Um, so, and what was your, what, and I don't want to stick you on this topic too long, because I want to hear about what you're doing now, but what trajectory did your, did your jobs take there? What did you cover? Well, I, I came in to work in the mansion on Madison Avenue in the visual department, took over, I was in charge of men's and I mean, that was like, you know, crazy days. You remember that? So it was like, yeah. a, like, a, like it was a, it was, it was a bolt out of the blue. Yeah. And it was really intense and really creative and a lot of fun. I did that particular, I had a great mentor there named Jeff Walker who died of AIDS at 40. I was 29 or 20. At 29, 
and he was the kind of creative director for the company as far as all the visual stuff. So showrooms, styling the shoots, working on all the different aspects creatively. When he died, a year or two, a year later, I think they promoted me to take over store development, which was across the globe, all the polo shops and all the creative services teams of the company. So visual. It's, it's funny when you said store development, I almost heard, I did briefly hear story development, but it's the same thing, right? It's the story you're telling. Yeah. You don't build the same store on Madison Avenue you build in South Beach or in Waikiki. Yeah. Or even Palm Beach. You just build different stories. Um, wow. So so you're you're on fashion shoots. You are doing stores. I, I was doing, you know, all the windows that you would see around the world on Madison Avenue. My teams, we designed all that. All the build up build us we built stores like the London Bond Street store, the Paris store, the new women's store on Madison Avenue. I mean, we were building stores everywhere. And the Polo Bar, Ralph's in Paris, um, different, all the project creatively, the shows that you saw, uh, the events in the park. We, we, I led an amazing team of people, but that's what I was doing. And it, then, it, it's uh, shocking to me how many people might see this and not realize how much you have influenced their personal design. Well, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. And about 25 years ago, I, I was asked, or 20 years ago, I don't remember now, to be honest, I, to, to, to take over uh, uh, running the home studio, the design studio, mm -hmm. which that was really fun and really interesting. Great team, lots of beautiful work, you know, a lot of projects. Yeah. Why is William Lee sending three cheeseburger emojis? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe he's having lunch. <laughs> Wait, is he making one for himself and one for you and one for me? Because I, I'm totally into that. Um, so Taylor Phillips is saying you are a legend and clearly, I mean, I've heard that. I've heard icon as well. Um, so, oh my God, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing because that has defined um, your design work has, has defined and informed so many people's taste. It's incredible. Well, I mean, I have to say that that play, the job, the place I, you know, the company evolved over so many years and there were so many incredible things to sort of create. And that was why it worked. It was great, you know, we never, we, Ralph is amazing that way. He doesn't plateau, we keep. Yeah, we keep. how is that? Cause, so the, if he doesn't plateau, that you're not plateauing, you're not allowed to plateau. So how yeah. does one keep it, <laughs> keep it up, so to speak? Intense. It's intense, and you you you're always on the move. That's why it's it is sort of. And stay. also, like the the constant necessary revolutions for it with um, keyed into the fashion schedule, which is relentless. How how did you keep yourself inspired? Like the, I, you know, I've there have been lots of times in my life when I have felt burnout, yeah, and and I've had to ride through it, and then catch fire again. I mean, there's inspiration everywhere, right? You can get inspired everywhere. How uh, do you feed it? How do you feed it? Well, I, I, had, I had this moment where I realized that I live in New York City. You know, we often forget New York City. We're so busy, we're working, we get in our, come home, don't go anywhere. And so what I do now is like, I get on my Vespa and I ride around. And it's like, <laughs> take a left, take a right. Yeah. Go on streets that you don't never been to. How do you force yourself not to do um, when you when you have a brand, when you have an identity um, within which you are working, how do you um, how do you make that new and fresh to you in your head while you're still working within a rubric? I think it's. I can't hear you. For me, it's really a movie. You know, it's keeping. It's like designing a different movie. It's like a give me another co another book to to read. You know. Mm -hmm. I, approach it that way. Like, well, what's the story? What's the plot? Let's figure out something new. Right. You know? And I, and I still do that to this day. Like, well, what, the, what is, how do I want to feel with this right now? What am I conveying? What, yeah. yeah. Like, it's not exciting if it's just about an arm or a beige sofa or a, Yeah. Grandma. It is, I, I do think that if you're not having fun, one's work will suffer. Yeah, totally. You have to find a way to make it fun, whether it's like make it a game or tell a story or. Yeah, yeah. Or, or I mean, it's just what we do is joy. And if you don't have joy doing it, then you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> then it's over. Yeah.
True. Right. So what inspired you to um, hang out your own shingle? Well, I mean, listen, 33 years is a long time. And I kept wondering. It's a career. The career. It's, it's, it's a my successful whole career. Life, my adult life. And it didn't suck, by the way. I was doing yeah. really well. But I kept saying, if I was ever going to have a next chapter, I needed to do it soon, because otherwise, just stay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just sort of the timing. I had, I have, I have. P.S. Your timing was terrible. <laughs> because well, you, yeah. you opened your own business and That's boom. Or <laughs> I feel like you know my attitude about this right now is creativity. It's like you make lemons out of lemonade. Yeah. I mean, lemonade out of lemons. This is the yeah. time. You know, New York sucked in the '70s, by the way. We got yeah, to I know I was here. I was here. Right? So, um, I mean, you were here and I was in Miami. But my point being is, I feel like creative stuff will blossom in this situation. I hope. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for that. So, when it was time, I mean, I think a lot had to do with having small children. I have two small children now. And I was like, How I old are they? I have a, a, a little girl who's about six and three quarters and a two and a half. Year. And that changes everything. No, I don't want to get up at, I don't want to get up at, and go to that. I want to be more flexible. Yeah. So that was it. You need them cuddling in bed. Yeah, and I want to be there for dinner. And I want yeah. to have all the things that, you know, that and which I'm able to do now. So it's great, you know? And, OK, so somebody's saying right now, what do you think works, having a signature style or going with the flow of clients brief, but still, um, I assume they still delivers? Is that what that means? Well, I think, obviously, residential clients, you're working. You have to. There's yeah, their private, yeah. their, their home, it's their life, and it's their money. <laughs> What's yeah. crazy? And uh, I think what I've experienced is that it requires a little bit of being a, a, a little bit of psychology and being their friends and talking them in off a ledge of something that, why did you call me the wrong guy if you want to do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's really not what I would do, ever. Yeah. To that. It's generally um, that. <laughs> and... And but you're you're very much not simply an interior designer. You you right. want to do be doing set designs and well. When I left when I left the business, when I left Ralph, I sort of took a year off to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Uh -huh. And then I thought, you know, I I can I did all of it at Ralph, and I'm capable of doing it all now. If you wanted to, you know, I want to be open. To, like when my friend David Rockwell did the sets of the Oscars, I was pea green with envy. Like wait. I want to do that. Yeah. Or, or whatever, if you, a Broadway show, uh, a, a, a restaurants are the ultimate form of theater, you know, and I feel like they'll come back. People will want to go out to dinner again, you know? So. So somebody said they wanted to hear more about the how do I want to feel story. How do you, how do you share that? How do I want to feel impulse when you're talking to a client? Like, telling them, getting them immersed in the process of well, identifying the vibe that they want well, to live with. One of, one of the things with designing windows on Madison Avenue was you had to figure out how to tell the complete story in one fell swoop. I couldn't keep back and adding elements and not making sure you would understand. You had one night or two nights to finish it, this is the story. So the ability to present something to the world to the client to ralph that really captures your imagination and gets you excited right like you know this yeah. is what, this is and, it's, and you've got one look to get it yeah or like this is what's getting me excited i feel like at least the clients that i've in come in contact with want me excited if i'm not excited about it oh, yeah. Not, you know yeah like, nobody wants their decorator to be <laughs> snoozing and like oh really oh what well, i would do but whatever okay you um, oh my God, I what just happened? realized my, my battery just said it's running out. I have to go get a, a, something at some point okay. um, to plug in. This is the second time I've done this recently. I'm, we're going to have to walk and talk so I don't <laughs> spaz out on you. So tell me about your, sorry, this is a big close up of my eyes. Oh, tell no. me about your apartment. My apartment? The one yeah. Right now? We're now in my bedroom. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm in my closet. taking you to my bedroom, Alfredo. This is my closet. Uh huh. Um, my apartment. What do you want to know? What can I tell you? Um. Well, what does it look like? What's the? What was the? How the did impetus? you want to feel at home? Okay, we're. Well, it's so, 
I looked at apartment after apartment after apartment after apartment downtown because I used to live in Tribeca. I had a mm-hmm. loft in Soho forever, and that was great. And then I had a Tribeca loft. That was okay. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I wanted something that felt more transportive, you know, something old that was here, old world that you found, like you were in Europe, right? Something sure. and I kept which, looking. Which, which can be done in New York. Right, but, but it's hard to find, or they've all been taken. But... I um I Ooh, kept this sorry. one. Okay. I'm being a spaz. Okay. 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 No <laughs> more moving for me. Um. So I kept coming back to this one apartment in the East Village. This one apartment, and I after one sheetrocked room after another sheetrocked mm-hmm. room with like you know no the character. T- the t- typical pong and pole kitchen, and that I was like, I don't. That's not what I want. And I found this place, and I kept looking at it, and it was a mess. And it's a, it's, it was a mess and a lot of people saw it and they didn't get it and they c- kept getting not sold. So finally, yeah. I, I said to my accountant, I really want that apartment because well, you can't buy it until you sell your other one. And I put my other apartment on the market and sold it in four days. So I was like, okay, time to, time to. Somebody's buy- sending you a message and you need to be there. Who? No, I mean, God was sending you oh, a yeah, message yeah. to move. I don't mean somebody here. Yeah. So, so, um, and I kept coming back to it. And, you know, I don't know, it, it sits oh, looking out over the St. Mark's Church. So there's something very Hitchcock about it. You know, the, the yeah. way people sit. It's, it's funny. You keep making references that are clearly like cinematic. Yes. You need that cinematic moment. Television. That's why Ralph and I were like this. He would say, and I knew what he meant because he watched it yeah. in the movie. I saw it in front of my TV and watched the same movie. I just watched The Women again this Did past you? week. And uh, I don't, do you remember Roberta? Oh yeah, totally. That's like a great well, I, I, girl with my daughter. He just loved it, and I was like, "You are my daughter." Like yeah. you know, I saw it when I was seven. You know, <laughs> so great, or eight, or whatever. But uh, so, so in the questionnaire, you mentioned that black paint is one of your go-to's that you love it. You never get tired of it. And I too am a lover of black paint. I had a black yeah. bedroom for years at my parents' house, and then I have a black kitchen and a black bar, and I just, I love it. And I, I see a black a, door behind you. I have black doors. See, they're uh-huh. black. I have a powder room downstairs that. Are they ebonized or are they painted? No, that's that. What is it? Antique paints of Europe, whatever it's called. Fine paints of Europe. Yeah, and it took like painted like eight times, but I have them everywhere. But I have a powder room downstairs that I painted completely black. Yeah. And then I was like, but you can't have a white toilet in a black bathroom. So I have a, a black toilet. And so, of course, you go in there, can't see anything. People bump into walls, bump into, you know, but it, I so like I it. had a. I had a client who told me that if you have a black toilet, um, every now and then you have to pour ink into the water. Because in case it gets scuffed and like white will show through, you have to put black ink in the water and let it sit there for a while. And so far it that's will... not... What? So far that's not happened. I know, but that's interesting, so right? You have to clean the floor because somebody's missed the toilet because they can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a suggestion. One bathroom in the house. A light. No, it's all lit, but (laughs) people still, whatever. It's like disorienting, but it's funny because you go in there and also the lock locks itself in. And I literally will tell people, if you go and take your phone and call me if you're locked in from the inside. Yeah, that's hilarious. (laughs) I want to come over and go to your bathroom. Is that weird? Does that make me a weird person? No, no, it's, you know. I I love sexy bathrooms. Yeah. I like, you know, like... Actually, my ba- my bathroom is black. What am I... Th- my my ba- bathroom is black. How many people... Have, any many houses have you seen that are sort of from the 60s or 70s that people have gone in and painted the whole house black and looks a thousand times better on the outside? Uh, I have never seen I, that. I have, like, five friends that have done it. Um, I like, feel like clearly what I now know to be your work and... Um, Jane, what is her last name at um, J. Crew? She was at J. Crew. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I forget her last name too. Oh my God! Why am I? This is so weird. Somebody will tell us. But um, she has. Uh, I, I associate her with black paint too. I've seen great interiors of uh, townhouse she lives in. It's sort of a little bit like an exclamation, right? Wherever you use it, you don't um, want to her, but it's an exclamation. Lions, thank you, Joy. Okay. Joy Moiler is sending you love. Oh. Jenna, Jenna, Joy. not Jane. Jenna yeah. Lyons. If I had said it right, we would have remembered. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they paint the whole exterior black. I love that. Well, I was surprised. It's not something I would do, but then you see the house. It's like, wow, that looks really modern and really, yeah, you know, sharp. It hides a lot, you know, straight, and it looks great. Yeah. So. so you're in a duplex. 
Uh -huh. What is what do your kids' rooms look like? Uh, my kids' rooms. Well, originally there was a library that I, of course, all paneled and whatever mm. that I had to rip out when they she was born, and it's pretty beautiful. It has a I had somebody paint a mural on the wall, and I mean, you know, I, I, it's not been public, but it's a kids' room. But pretty. what's the mural of? I want to hear. Well, there's a Japanese artist, and now I forget his name. Which oh. I think I know who you mean. And he does dishes. I walked down the street in Venice, California one day, and there's a store that sells his ceramics. And I saw the dishes, fell and bought all the dishes. And, and they're very moody and hazy? No, these are very graphic. They have like, uh, it's very graphic. I mean, and uh, a friend of mine who's an artist, she, I said, can you do this? Because I would have done it, but I didn't have the time to do it. Then she said, yeah, of course. So she did it, and it's on the wall there. And it's, it's, it's very beautiful. I mean, I plagiarized his drawing but i changed it enough. yeah yeah you it, adapted inspired by yeah inspired by I bought it um up. Yeah. and is is every room in your house connected or do you have yeah people want to people want you to cave in and give us a tour but they also recognize that you're not going to um do, do, is there flow or do you have pockets well, I, I tend to like to to make to use a palette that connects Right? Mm -hmm. I feel like when the apartment, when it's not palatial and you're not in 60,000 square feet, that things should flow together. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times I've been to houses that they didn't consider that and it's a little jarring from spot, spot to spot. Yeah. Right? You yeah. really know what you're doing. I have, I have many different colored rooms, but when you, and, and you see a few of them when you walk in the door, because uh, they, they go down. Uh -huh. So I tried to, my, my hardest decision was what to do in the entrance to uh -huh. make sense, to connect them, to have something that, that had a little bit of each. Right, which is the way to do it. I mean, yeah, I, it I, I just, it's the, the department's large, but it's not palatial. It's, three, it's big. I won't say how big it is, but I like the things to sort of flow together. Uh -huh. Same thing in my house on Shelter Island. It's sort of the same. Uh, actually, not the current room's different. No, I, I'm, I change it. I change it. When there's space, I do it. I love how you described your taste because it's such a great, like, mashup. You said bohemian and industrial. And you said eclectic. But it was really the bohemian and industrial, which you think of as completely counter to each other. But it, it's totally what I think of when I think of well, your work. Well, I like, I, like, I like industrial things that are from another time that are sort of patinated or patinaed and mm -hmm. screwed up and then you, know, you mix it with something that's unexpected. I don't know, I just like things that- Right, it's indicative of a life lived. Right, right, right. Um, and the bohemian, is that from loving to travel or well, intellectualism? That for me came from my upbringing. I was raised by hippies in Coconut Grove. Yeah, they were hippies. Uh, well, my parents weren't, but I was right in the middle of it. Okay, because I'm like, you went from hippie to Laura Ashley. That's you know, awesome. That's it. I, my parents were young, first generation Cubans. They dropped me into Coconut Grove in the 60s, early 70s. Colored my world, loved everything about it. And it really spoke to how I think, you know? Yeah. And it is the part I liked about Ralph most. It was the sort of double, the sort of bohemian hippie, you know, Carly Sun inside of the sure. world. I sure. Mean, <laughs> the fringe and the really tall, sweet yeah, boots. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Nick side. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I do. I do think of various phases of what I consider Ralph Lauren. Um, you know, you have the the uh, chariots of fire moment. You have the out of India. I mean, out of Africa uh, moment. Uh, you know, the, there are there are storylines. You have the Santa Fe chunky turquoise moment. Um, yeah. How fun. I mean, but they were, all, but they were all references to something, you know, and 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 you could take, you know, take that into the. It was hip. It was hippie too, you yeah. know. I yeah. loved. I loved. You know, Coconut Grove was a great environment for me to grow up in. Um, what are you working on right now that's exciting you most? Well, I'm. F we're finishing up a gigantic, beautiful home in Cabo. That's. Uh -huh. It's more like a small hotel, but it's a it's a it's a home for some celebrity clients that I have that are good friends of mine, and they're it's it's going to be modern and bohemian, which I'm really excited about. And I'm working with these great architects out of 
Cabo and- And are you still flying back and forth? Are you allowed to? Well, I went recently for the first time in a year I've traveled anywhere and it was something. I flew from New York to Mexico City and then Mexico City. I love Mexico City, by the way. I love, love, love. I didn't love the airport, but I, it was fine. It was oh, fine. Airport it was sucked. The first trip with a shield and a mask and your own water and your own yeah. this and your own that for, for a trip. But it was, it was worth it. I loved getting there. It was beautiful. The place is going to be great. Also, I'm starting my own furniture line. Which I'm really so, yes, when I, when I was writing the 52, I was like, obviously, product is right, coming yeah. right behind. I mean, it occurred to me, I wasn't sure that I was going to do that, but then I was, it occurred to me when I, how much I really enjoyed doing that. And then there were a lot of people in the business that I know that were totally supportive with the idea. And so hopefully, yeah. yeah so. Can you say who it's with? It's with EJ Victor. Oh, great. Perfect. So you know, you're, you're old friends with them. Yeah. They used to do Ralph Lauren. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I they, met Theodore Alexander. Oh, you did? So I'm with. I will see their, you know, I'm going to market next week. So I will see the new Ralph stuff. Yes, yes. I, not, I had nothing to do with it. But, I know, uh, I know, the, but I'm excited to see it. Two and a half years, yeah, yeah. So, and then, um, and then, and then I'm hopefully maybe have lighting, hopefully have fabric. You know, all I love doing yeah, it. Yeah, you want to play. Well, I, I felt like, wait, I did that. It was a great experience. There are people that are, you know, that, have had less experience than I have that are doing it. And I'd mm -hmm. like to see what I can do. You know, it's Absolutely. really, you know, so, and then see what else. Oh, uh, I'm doing a penthouse in Chelsea, which is interesting. And, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a famous building that I'm renovating that I really can't say which one it is, but it's a famous, famous uh -huh. park. Hopefully, you know, we were derailed a little bit by COVID, but once, yeah. once it, once it gets, it's about to start back up again. So that's, you said on Park? No, it's it's. Let's just say it's in, on Sutton on the river. Okay. Okay. So, over there. Mm -hmm. Way too famous for the people. The way too fancy for the people that live there for me to say. So, but it's going to be great. And uh, and I, you know, I was about I was going to work on a restaurant that got killed. So you know, I took a, yeah. I took a hiatus. But we're back up and running. Yeah, I think I wonder if supper clubs will have a renaissance. Um, so. Wouldn't that be cool? I would love to do one. That's another Let's thing. Let's put I'd that out into the universe. I want to be a part owner in one and, a, you know, do something like that. I like it all. I did antiques. I was the one that bought all the vintage, all the props, everything. I, you know, I would go to Paris like 10 times a year and buy all that oh. stuff. It was great. Oh my God. You must have been drunk with power. It was <laughs> But you would go there. I mean, and it wasn't like drunken shopping. I had projects that at all. No, but I mean, that's like yeah. just that the, the quantity of things that you got to get. Yeah, we'd like, where can this table go? And they'd pull out plans and be like 10,000 places. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it was, yeah. like, it was like, and they were in the budget. Of course, you had to make it all work, you know? Has your scale changed since working there? Scale, what do you mean? I think when I think of Ralph Lauren furniture and Ralph Lauren interiors, I think jumbo. You know, it's funny because I think jumbo, but they always fought me to make it smaller. And, uh, and, uh, you mean, so, meaning they did not want you to make it smaller. No, they wanted it smaller wanted than you, smaller. than you saw. <laughs> yeah. Cause they're like 10 foot sofas. I mean, they are, yeah. I think, look, I think, a I lot think I had a client who had a 111 inch Ralph Lauren sofa. Ralph Lauren sofa. There are, I mean, you know, there are endless options and anybody can make it in any size. Like yeah. really, like just, you know, when you're putting a line out there, what's the most commercial? Well, there's X, Y, and Z, but. Yeah, we, no, it's, um, it's interesting. The sizing tells you who's buying it. Right, I mean, I mean, if you're designing a line for New York City, what are you gonna build? Like, right, get, yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta get in a door. It's gotta get in the doorway. For a house in Dallas, well, what do you? Yeah, <laughs> then there's yeah, totally. You know, so it just depends. And um, I think for us, or when I was working on that, it just depended on the movie. If you're doing an estate in Bedford, you're not making the tiny little, you know, thing. You're doing an yeah. estate, you know, so it just depended. And, and I think hopefully when you're creating a line, you're able to create the spectrum of sizes that's mm -hmm. appropriate, right? Don't get stuck totally. with one. Totally. You know, you can, so, I mean, how um, do you feel? Are, what? 
how's your life? I mean, don't you do multiple sizes? I do. I do multiple. I do do multiple sizes. But as a as a city girl, born and bred. You know, there's a point at which I'm like, oh, I couldn't possibly go bigger, could I? You know, like. <laughs> My apartment here, I had to hoist. I've cut too many sofas in half. Well, I knew in this apartment that everything had to be hoisted onto the terrace before you moved in because nothing sure. went through the front door. Everything was on sitting on the terrace, ready to go in through the French doors because yeah. it wasn't going to come in the front. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, we've got like squirrely little turns when you walk in the door and you got to go, you know, you got to get around. Um, so... Okay, so I'm thinking of you growing up, going, wanting to study art and fashion, and you know, fashion. When you say fashion, I'm assuming you mean women's fashion. Is that wrong or correct? Well, I didn't want to design clothes, but I loved illustration. I remember Joe Eula and all these different fashion mm -hmm. illustrators that just for a kid from Miami who was creative yeah. or Warhol. I mean, was it? Yeah, all of those people. It would all appeal to me. I mean, all of it. I, I would get lost in a department store looking at mannequins. I would look yeah. just that kid. I tell a story about when I was a small child, I'm the oldest of four. When my parents would leave, I would make them take all the furniture out in the back and I would restyle the house when they get back. And they I, let you? Uh, they had no choice. I would that is so fabulous. <laughs> And my brothers and sisters would be like, are you kidding? No, I want the sofa on that wall and I want to move this over here and I want to move that over there. And we would do like showroom, literally showroom setups over and over again. And my mother would just walk in and be like, looks great. Did she love it every time? <laughs> she did. That, yeah. is, that is maybe like something that should be required of every I did. decorator I, designer. Remember it was the seventies, right? So they had shag carpet, which I hated. Uh -huh. I would rake the shag carpet. I would just like, <laughs> A whole thing. I was a stylist at a young age, you know? Yeah. You know? Um, as so many of us are. Um, so, so anyway, so I'm thinking of those things and which which may be incorrectly I'm I'm I have connotations of going into fashion and uh as like feminine feminine style. Well, but I consider your taste I, my very masculine. My father's I think internalized homophobia about it kind of went away when I got a job at Ralph Lauren. Sure. Because it was- but, but you have very, very masculine taste. Well, yeah, well, thank you. But my point was it was, I ended up at Ralph Lauren where it was ultimate in menswear at the time. Remember they were in women's clothes really at the time. They weren't? No. I, I mean, just feel like they've always been in women's too. When did he start doing women's? The, the, the real success story at the time was it was a big menswear company everyone knew i mean mm -hmm. great men wore his clothes they knew who he was they wore the clothes it wasn't like valentino menswear it was like sure. not menswear you know yeah and for my dad that was a stamp of approval and he was okay with it he never really asked what i was doing but he was happy that i'd landed somewhere that was successful is he still alive no he passed when i was 35 so but he was he was happy they were you know but it was funny it was like whoa yeah now that's okay because i'm not you the stamp of, of authority. Huh? You got the stamp of authority. Yeah, and it wasn't like I was designing ball gowns at Oscar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> to him, it was, you know, you, I sort of, sort of threaded the needle and he was okay with it. Yeah, the, yeah, asking for the minimum of uh, <laughs> theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what's your, if you could, this is such an annoying, like, interview question. Um, if you had to pick, oh no, you already did. You already answered this. You said the 1920s. So yeah. you are like Roberta and the women and all of like the silver well, screen and. This day, architecturally, my favorite homes when I'm looking at homes are either the late 20s or early 30s. Stone houses, modern art, everything. It's just like. So Francis Elkins and David Adler must tickle your, your fancy. Oh. Yeah. Um, constantly looking at homes like you know i'm always wanting to see where else you know like i own a victorian from 1840 1840 is my happy year is so it i would do greek revival 1840. this is victorian yeah, like yeah, yeah. cottage sure. you know big cottage and i i loved it but it was an adjustment like oh okay i gotta i can't do i can't do gingerbread and i can't do yeah that how to do it where it suits me you know it suits the family so. so what do the interiors look like what kind of furniture did you use? Um, it's eclectic. It's eclectic. I can't explain it. I, it's on my, it's, it's, it's yeah. eclectic, sort of English. But it, little... but it falls into line with what you do. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and the thing is, I really, 
I approach that one as a family house. Like I'm not obsessed over the interiors. It's like, it will happen as it happens, right? Uh -huh. That's, you know, that's what makes it. Do you have a partner you have to please in any way? Uh, my husband, Brad, is 100% supportive and trusts me implicitly. Okay, only... good. As he should. I mean, if, if, that... you, if you can't earn somebody's trust, who can? When, when I first met him in 88, I had a gigantic, I inherited from the man who passed away, Jeff Walker, a Sherlock uh -huh. sofa that was upholstered in Dongia white canvas. Uh -huh. Remember, like, like, and he came over, he's like, I can't sit on that. You can't read the paper on that. I don't want to live with white sofas ever. So wow. I don't live with white sofas now. It's fine. So that was his only requirement. Only requirement, and bookcases. You gotta have bookcases. Oh Love yeah, them. I mean. Well, Hallelujah. I mean, when we moved, we moved together, I went and bought Ikea white for my bookcases for a room. I mean, I wasn't building bookcases, yeah. but. So um, that, yeah. yeah, did you, when, when your answer for no room is complete without books? Yeah, because ultimately you, yeah, when you, yeah, it's the beauty. I agree, that's my answer too. I mean, followed shortly by, you know, a little bit behind is dimmers, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like books and then different. How many houses have you been into where people have no sense of the lighting? Um, well, I mean, obviously the answer is many, but I, there, I mean, no sense of paint, like quality paint job and no sense of good hardware. And I often joke with, with um, homeowners that once we show them the beautiful Nance or the S.A. Baxter or the Butler hardware, they're ruined for life. Oh, I know. Well, this is it's like the the scales fall from their eyes and yeah. they this can never not see it again. This apartment I'm sitting in, we went to Butler. And when I got through with it, I was like, I would never been to Butler. I was like, that's like you just took me to Cartier to buy like. Or, I'm or yeah. Or I'm oh my God, I'm being I'm so forgetful today. Um, the great one on Jane Street, the great Jane hardware. Na uh, on, uh, Butler. No, it's, um, oh my God, I'm sending them an apology immediately. It, you go in there and it's a million things that it, it, you almost look like you're in a, an old apothecary shop. And I know which one you're talking about. It's now not Nance, Joy. It starts with a J or a G. P. Garen. G. Yeah. Thank you, Garen. Garen. My God, Garen, I'm so sorry. I take, uh, my, I'm ashamed of myself. So anyway, um, Garen, too, like once you've, once you've gone to those places and discovered them and seen what they can do, you walk into any, anybody's house and, yes, P.E., not P.J., um, you walk in and, and um, you know, you're ruined for life. Yeah. You know, we realize how beautiful hardware is. And once you know a good paint job, yeah. you can never, you can never live with a bad paint job again. Yeah. And you have to tell people like they come and they look at my doors and I'm like, yeah, it took six paint jobs and drying somewhere for them. They didn't sit there. They laid them flat for, yeah. you know, and I love them. So I wouldn't. And the coats and the prep and the. would do that for you if you're not going to take the time to do it. Yeah. it. And pay the price for it because none yeah. of that. Yeah. All of the things that we're discussing are horribly expensive. But yes, good lighting. Good lighting. Yeah. Mm, so important. Well, yeah. I mean, and I've often, even in retail, all the stores, you know, you, you know, lighting has changed a lot in the last 20, 30 years. And still is. And, you know, a month can go by and I need to touch base with it, it, on a project with our lighting designer to make sure that we're still. Well, I... Though, though I do have requests for much more simplified systems all the time from clients it's also the the energy of uh, energy uh sort of efficiencies and how the bulbs lose their their lamp light and you wonder why wait it was great now it's dim and i'm going i think i'm going having an aneurysm but meanwhile <laughs> bulbs lives you know all of this stuff and you kind of go and like wow your house is so beautiful yes because i stay on the lighting it's always yeah Lit. I was talking to Wendy Goodman the other day, and we were talking about Brian Sawyer. Do you know Brian uh -huh. Sawyer? Of course. Have you been to his house? Which one? The no. apartment in New York. No. Okay, so you have to go. Uh -huh. So when you go, I mean, Brian must be like, why are you talking about me all the time, Hampton? But anyway, <laughs> I am. So you go into his house, and it's, as you would imagine, remarkably beautiful. And it's very dark. 
uh, obviously at night and their candles and everything is very dim, but so sexy. And if I, you know, I leave his house and I want to go home and like smash all the lighting in my house because <laughs> it's, he's, he's got his finger on the pulse. He just knows exactly how, um, and I am going blind. So I need, it's called I need our lights upon lights upon lights. It's called art directing. It's like, I know when, you know, and it's subliminal. Totally. You create, you create the mood and, and you direct people to feel a certain way. Like when you're watching a movie and it's scored and you hear the sad music and it triggers you to feel sad. Totally. You know, well, you're, you're, it's like a Pavlovian dog. I used to own a cottage in East Hampton that I lived in for 17 years and the cottage did not start off the way it did. Uh -huh. And then it ended up really beautiful. And I remember when I wanted to sell it, I said to Brad, but we can only show it in June. What do you mean? Well, oh. only show And it's when the ter when all the French doors are open and the roses are blooming and the hydrangeas up and the pool's going and and I remember I would I would show it at the end of the day and I'd have Billy Holiday playing and yeah. I'd play in three days. Um, that's so funny. What does it look like in October? <laughs> uh, well, you close up more of it. November. Close the house doesn't feel as big because yeah. you know the way it was it was in the summer you're open to the garden you're in the garden most of the time so it was just knowing now you, you follow and it, it so totally. don't worry about it they bought it it's like enjoy no, no i'm thinking i'm thinking um that i should you know if you're brought up in the decorating uh, on that path and just that path um you think about the enduring qualities of whatever sometimes more than you should. Right. So I'm enjoying hearing you talk about these things that are very display driven right. and that, that the moment is just as, as important as the long, the long haul. I, I, when I was designing the polo bar, I was a nervous- Which is so amazing. I was a nervous wreck. It was my idea, honestly, to pull off that basement into a restaurant. It used yeah. to Oh, Basque, which was upstairs, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, the, the, the first room is too narrow. How are we going to deal with it? And how are people going to feel good in a basement with no windows? And I thought, you know, I've been in plenty of places in London that were clubby. Totally. And, you know, like, or, or Annabelle. And they have major light challenges in London. And so they, like you go to a light challenge place. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, no, I just thought these are the elements you need. And we had a really great designer work with us and put Ella, make sure that every table was lit, no shadows. You know, make sure no one was in bad lighting, but there are ways to do it, you know? And it was really an emphasis, an expensive one, but we needed to deal with it. Because yeah. you know, people don't like to sit in a restaurant and look terrible or feel like they're in the dark corner when everyone else looks great, right? I um, I don't mind being in a dark corner, but yeah, I don't want to look horrible and I don't want to look ghoulish over right. a light that's like casting right. weird shadows. Right, right. Um, right. Either up or down. Right, right. But, yeah, like both of those are really, Right. Bad, bad right. choices for me. Right, right, right. Um, so CZ, it is Dior. It's a Dior <laughs> addict color. I love my Dior lipsticks. Um, so what? what oh God, I know what you want to do. When does your When does your furniture come out? When can I buy it? Uh, well, let's uh, let's. It's Two years, one year, now what? Absolutely, hopefully COVID allowing by the spring and then be at the fall market next year in High Point. I think that's Perfect. correct. That's correct. I think that's right. But yeah, it's, we're in the throes of it now, trying to figure it all out. Yeah. I have about 70 new pieces coming out now. Oh, really? During, during COVID. So we, you know, I'm going to market and we're going to do a lot of video stuff, but I'm excited to find um, strategies about how to bring market to designers who aren't at market. So we should talk about that. Yeah. Um, Cause we, we, we've got to find a way to cater this affair as well as um, uh, EJ Victor Keith is doing his line. Um, we have to find a way to bring it to, to the people who don't go or now won't ever go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, where, how would you do it? How, what are you thinking? Um, I am, thinking let me think a little more i'll tell you i'll tell you offline but um i have ideas 
you know, know, when I go into my tub in the morning, I have great ideas. When I do not have tubs available to me of an appropriate depth, if they are not cold or tea for two, then I have no ideas. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I've been to High Point so many times where we never went for the market. We went before because we went to, to set, set up. up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd see product or set up the showrooms or whatever. And or were you there for all of the shoots, the product shoots? No, I didn't do that. I did the product. We, I did the advertising in this wherever we went, but the product shoots I had. Yeah. I, but but I, I would go bef before to set up or to review products. So it'll be interesting to go back to set up for myself yeah. and be there for market, which I've never done. Um, well, it's turned into a huge party, so it's nothing to dread. It used to be dread inducing 100 years ago, but I, now it's. Marion McAvoy. Uh huh. She's. Uh, she's so amazing i remember going with her and her grilling in the, like a tool dress or something with a I, it was like this is crazy back back when she was like was editor of was it what was it el decor el decor and then house beautiful right and now i mean do you know the art she's making no oh my god well run don't walk it, her instagram is g-u-s-t the poodle <laughs> and she is making these beautiful collage. I mean, I don't, I don't think the woman sleeps. She must have the most epic insomnia of another person on earth, but or of any person. On oh, earth. do you remember her house, her apartment? With yes, her yes, wall? yeah. So, so was, she does corquillage. She does collage. She paints lampshades. I have some in my family room that are the most amazing, beautiful things. You have to look at what she's doing, oh, yeah. oh, and then right. use some of it. I mean, actually, next time, Marion, when you watch this, which I will now force you to do, you need to give me lampshades for market because that would be lampshades are also so important. They are. They are. Um, not easy. Not right? easy. Oh, I don't even mean determining the size because that's impossible. So proper professionals have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I just mean like specking either the color or getting a pattern is so much fun. Yeah. Not my, not my favorite thing. Um, have you done a boat? Yes, actually. Because I feel like you would make the most incredible I, I, yacht. I did a Chris Craft, but that was easy. A Chris Craft. Oh no, 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 no. I mean like Craft. a fed ship. No, we I I was started one with Ralph. We started one. We started the hull? The, well, the design of it and then for whatever reason I don't remember specifically what happened, but we did it and then we stopped. Yeah. But no, I they're, would they're 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 long well, long I'm, lead items. There's not one that's the same. It's all bespoke, yeah. right? Everything about it, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, but, I feel like I feel like you would be a child in a candy shop. I, I really would love that. And and um, there's so many beautiful ones now. You know, modern and you know. Yeah, yeah, they're incredible. I, I um, yeah, I'm not even gonna. I, <laughs> my word retrieval is so for shit today <laughs> that I, I'm not even. I don't know what happened to me. I slept late this morning a restorative sleep but apparently it wiped it wiped the memory bank <laughs> clean i did not entirely reboot when i got up <laughs> uh, that's all right um so so you have a house in in the country yes. and you have an apartment where would you love to have a place that, where you don't St. Bart's. Oh, you, you said that a hundred times. See, see oh, what I mean about the memory? I used so to... I've never been to St. Bart's. My, oh. The one time I was supposed to go, I couldn't for work. And, and it was still when they, they still have that terrifying fly-in, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's ter I, I mean, it's terrifying. You let yourself get terrified. I don't. I just like. But look. isn't everybody on earth there? Isn't that to be avoided at no. all costs? Since I've had children, I have not been back, to be honest, because it is not a place for children at this age so we've been going to harbor island which is a place for children sure you know much more fun uh, also i've not been to harbor island i am so we we've taken the kids to lyford uh, uh, which was great fun i mean we used to go for my boat to bimini and to cat Cay, but i never went to harbor island as an adult but i it's great but sam bart's is really incredible i mean and i i used to rent rudolph nuriev's old house which was like this oh, old nice hippie, crazy, macrame, swings. And... I can imagine the textiles must oh. have been. And then it was owned after he died by this incredible French woman who, you know, basically made everything out of a French tablecloth. Like everything was like, anything you wanted was a French tablecloth. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Uh, 
and and I would literally fly in and stay for three weeks and I would never bring a bag everything I'd leave everything I think for 10 years I left shorts and t-shirts there and never had a bag to leave but I haven't been back did you would you go in high season I would go I have been in November which I wasn't my and I didn't is that high season that's Thanksgiving and Christmas forget it yeah. I would never go at Christmas or I, mean, I don't think I'd want to go there and see all the people that won well and it was, that sounds like a nightmare travel with a publicist like I don't I don't not if I don't get invited to that thing I don't care I mean that's not why I'm going so I would no but I mean I wouldn't want to bump into anybody I'd want to have right. you know like but when you go, when I would go I would go the end of February or all of March like like kill the winter in New York three weeks all a month. of March yeah get a tan wow. in New York it's really great I, I, you're my hero <laughs> I need to I need to sit down and rethink now, now every have, choice I've ever made. Now I have to go on my kids' spring break. You know, like Oh my God! If anybody had told me how you could just check out at spring break when you have kids, I would have had them much earlier. <laughs> I think I, just, I was like, "Wait, what? We're allowed to take vacation? People get exactly. that that's that yeah. as a parent, you're allowed to do that." Yeah, exactly. But now it's at her on her on her schedule. So before I would just pick when I wanted to go and just. Yeah. Great. It's a beautiful place if you've never been. No, never been. You should I'm also like not excited to get into a bathing suit ever again. Um, really? I, yeah. Where do you want to go? Where have you, where would you Anywhere. want? Anywhere. I just want the borders to be open. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I am, um, if I had all of the money in the world or half of the money in the world or a quarter of the money in the world, I would do like just epic trips twice a year, September and you know, I, I would love, in a total fantasy world, I would love to live in another country for a year or so for my kids. You know, take them, make, drill in. You know, they speak Greek. I'd love to finish their Greek. I would love to yeah. you know, live in Madrid. I would, you know, there's so many places. That I, I want to take my kids to Japan. I want to go to China. You know, I've been to China many times, but not, India, one of my friends from India is on. Where would you want to live? And I would say, you know, if I was going to live anywhere where you would say, He's not working and he's in board shorts and flip flops. It would be St. Bart's. But if I, but I. Tuscany, Tuscany. Yeah, I would love oh. to, Yeah, sure. Why not? Why yeah. Not? And in this country, uh, you know, I always have a love affair with Los Angeles, but I don't think I could live there. Um, I like to visit it a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I love New York. I like, I yeah, like New York is pretty great. Yeah. I know that everybody's worried that New York's not going to come back, but of course New York is going to come back. Yeah, it'll be. It'll and be... residents like the two of us will make sure that it does. Yeah, I think so. I mean, all it takes is a vaccine, right? <laughs> I mean, and if it's the case for everywhere, where are you going to yeah. move? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? And yeah, uh, if you like being around people. Yeah. I mean, look, so people have asked, what, are your, what trips do you like to do when you're not working? And I like to go places, nice. dramatic outdoor places, you know, what, like Utah, like Amangiri or Big Sur, or when you go to Greece, you can't believe it. Like, you're, you're like, oh my God, this is not, because it's the antithesis of urban life. It's like, yeah. it's, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't, I've been to Paris a thousand times. I love it, but it's not what oh, I want. Oh, I'd never get bored of going to Paris. I like to look at a blue sky and be left alone for a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get well, it sounds like you, you work hard enough to earn that right. Yeah. Some, yeah. You know, I, 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 I often joke when I go to LA, what I love about it, I say it's like a mental health break. Like I get in my car, I drive <laughs> back, no one calls you, you you just do your thing, go to where you want to go and yeah. not life in New York, be in New York, go, go, go. Right. Go, go, go. Well, we have hit the hour mark, so I'm going hey. to release you, but I want to just talk about very quickly, are you doing a book? And would you do a book? I Please, am, I'm requesting I, that you do I'm a book. Talking with, I am hoping to do a book, yes. Okay, good. Because love, if you're doing all of this, like it would be really great, consider, you know, it'd be really great for somebody like me to, to watch you tell that story of your work and what you're into, I'd love it. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I, I'm, yes, the answer is yes. I've got to get my head around it, but I'm talking to someone about it right now. Okay, and good. And Christian Spilling invites us to Florence. So we can spend some time in Florence uh, and you can work on your book. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. Multiple books would be great. I, I love Multiple. it. You know, visual people, right? Yeah. Wow. Totally. 
All right. Well, thank thanks. you so much. This has been so much fun. Obviously, uh, you know, between battery and word retrieval problems, uh, I could continue going because I'm so no, scattered today. Really fun. Thank you. I really appreciate but it. Thank you. And um, lots of love. And I will speak to you soon about how, what I figure out about market. That'd be great. Sounds wonderful. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye.